Hello everybody, so in this video something has popped up on my feeds that I just really felt the need to talk about. This is the attempted trademarking of the video game Rogue by Atari. Now if you're not familiar with what Rogue is, Rogue is the namesake for the rogue-like genre. So it's a rather long backstory, but kind of simply put, uh, as the designers went from university to university, one of the things that they were working on was uh, it, like text-based games that were working with early procedural generation. And Rogue was both kind of a prototype, but also a, a product of that early kind of computer experimentation at various universities. Uh, you can read the full story here, as you can see it's quite long, but as essentially it is the birthplace of procedural uh, gaming as we know it. Uh, the genre of rogue and roguelikes uh, kind of originated from academia and uh, designers kind of mucking about. Now, while they did land on some pretty compelling games that ended up sucking many, many hours of people's time, and also then eventually uh, expanding into a further genre based on the one original prototype of rogue, it was always very hard to market and didn't sell particularly well. Even back in the day, while it had its fans and many people respected it, and to this day, NetHack has been uh, one of the longest developed games of, like, ever. Bridgestone Media actually owns Epix's IPs, the name of the studio that they went with for Rogue, and that is why Rogue is available on Steam. Now, it's available on Steam for a couple of dollars. It's $3.89, but if you're like me, instead of purchasing it from a third-party company that purchased the rights to it a number of years ago, you'd be much more willing to download it off of the DOS Games Archive or the Internet Archive if you're looking for the Mac version, or alternatively, just simply grabbing the source code, code and building it yourself, or one of the various other spinoffs uh, or in games that we're heavily inspired by. Personally, I recommend Brogue, but... I'll throw a link in the description of this video and continue babbling about more important topics. So, this is it. This is Atari's trademark filing for Rogue. Now, let's just read through this real quick, and then we're going to try and figure out if this is bad or not. Uh, so the mark for Rogue, uh, the trademark registration is intended to cover the categories of downloadable game software, recorded game software, downloaded computer programs for the creation and distribution of digital collectibles using blockchain software, technology and smart contracts, downloadable digital media, namely digital collectibles, and in the nature of art, images, photos, and video games, and videos of games, and video game footage, and video game highlight videos, and game player character models, and skins, and virtual experiences created and distributed with blockchain software technology and smart contracts in the field of interactive entertainment. Now, if we scroll down a little bit in this, uh, they're talking about Rogue. And as somebody who is, um, let's just say, a fan of freedom of information and the availability and distribution of things like pieces of software like Rogue, uh, I find this mildly disturbing, to put it politely. Uh, now, this was filed on the 12th of January of 2024. And let's dive into what Atari is right now and talk about what the state of this company is. At least for me, looking at this trademark, it makes my, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. So I've seen a lot of different people talking online about this, and kind of the consensus is, well, it's, it's obviously not that they are copywriting the game, but what they are doing is they are trying to trademark the name of a game. And it's a name of, the, of a game that has publicly available source code and it's the name of a game that has a lot of history and it's the name of a game that has a lot of connection to current and past game history now i i i'm concerned about this because while I am not the biggest fan of the current usage of the word roguelike, and I'm very much in the Berlin de interpretation and the classic definition and holding the, the, the name and the genre to its roots, but even if you aren't like me and you like the modern iterations of the usage of the term roguelike and you uh, are totally fine with diluting that and kind of making it a more generic term, 
this should concern you as well because suddenly a company is showing up and saying, hey, we're going to own that. And what happens when they own that, which is a term that is used to describe a huge swath of games as well as a specific IP. Not only that, a specific IP that is currently both free and you can download the source code for, but also for sale. So Atari currently is a weird company. They sell shoes. <laughs> they, they sell all kinds of bizarre merchandise. Uh, they have... A, uh, let's close this. They have all uh, sorts of various bizarre, maybe not bizarre, but various collectibles based on their history, which honestly, if I was in their position, I would be doing exactly the same thing. Uh, they also have a, a, a like a clothing line called Atari Club, which also sells like framed uh, posters of the original game cartridge art, which honestly, I think is maybe the highest piece of value thing that they have because like what why would you want to play any of those games i mean come on let's, let's be honest with you uh but if you actually click on their games um they they have a pretty uh well this is their catalog essentially they, they have roller coaster tycoon which consists of a shitty mobile game a crappy console port and then roller coaster tycoon classic which is actually a really well-made kind of um uh, reskinning of the original games which is actually a really good collection. Uh, and then also the Atari collections, which, uh, well, do, do you like flashbacks? So flashbacks are just where they take a bunch of their old Atari games, package them into a thing, try and give me a seizure with the top of the screen, and then uh, ship it out to modern consoles um, at a pretty hefty markup, but with, you know, leaderboards and online play and whatnot. Um, nobody wants to play these games, so why, who cares? And then they have the Atari Recharged, which is a little bit of a weird rabbit hole, because uh, I don't think anybody really knows that these exist. Atari Recharged, these are, reinterpretations re uh, of their classic games but repackaged in kind of a modern style for a modern audience theoretically uh, if we look at Yars Recharge for Yars Revenge um, and we, sc we scroll down a little bit until we can see some gameplay uh, I mean like th this is kind of what, what, what we're talking about here I'm, I'm not going to play the trailer but uh, they, they have made various different uh uh, various versions of these recharged games. I mean, if I jump over the Steam page here, you can see their Asteroids Recharge. This one was actually decently well uh, received, but they've certainly put out uh, some of these recharged games that uh, let's let's just say nobody likes. Like, here's a Berserk Recharged here on Steam, and quite literally nobody is playing this. It's It's got 48% positive reviews. It's getting canned. Their Haunted House remake that they were touting a while ago um, actually has decent reviews, but again, nobody seems to know these exist, for lack of a better term. So outside of that, what else is Atari up to? Well, I mentioned that they had their fashion brand slash club thing. Uh, they have Atari Club, which is... Uh, Mostly the Atari Club store, which is these art prints, which I've actually considered buying a couple of times. They're 25 bucks. I, you know, like I said earlier, the, the only thing that Atari has to me, in my opinion, that is any good is the original artworks for these games. And like, look at this stuff. Like that stuff's just awesome looking. Like I just, there's something, it's, it's a pretty timeless style that Atari has with a lot of their art. And I, I think it's really cool. But the main thing that stopped me from doing it is this. This is the main thing that stopped me from doing that and purchasing anything off of their store. Well, they are actively selling NFTs of all of this shit. And frankly, it devalues uh, the physical versions in my opinion because like knowing that they have this crap just makes me less interested in supporting them as a whole and our overall sours me on them as a company but if we go back to their games page of their website and actually scroll down to one other thing I will say they have actually got me once or twice. Uh, this is the Atari 50 anniversary collection which uh, was made by Digital Eclipse. It, while this looks like a video game, it's actually a documentary. It's it's an incredible piece of combined information of different eras of Atari, all kind of packaged together with a full-length interactable documentary and remakes of some of the games, which are not related to the uh, Atari Reach Charge series. These game, this is a fantastic value for money. It's it's a huge awesome documentary with some incredible interview work and great camera work done in it, as well as like an interesting little collection of games to play throughout for context. That being said, Atari as a company still makes me feel ill. And let's kind of finish this up here.
Atari trademarking Rogue to me is dangerous in a few ways. The best case scenario, if they took the trademark and let's just say purchased the rights to it from the current IP holders, they could make their own version in let's just say an Atari Recharge series. I mean, Atari did work with Epic Software back in the day, so there is some legacy there and that kind of makes sense to a degree. They've also purchased uh, Digital Eclipse, which was the company that made uh, Atari 50 and perhaps they're purchasing the trademark for Rogue so that they could make a collection on it with uh, Digital Eclipse. Digital Cl Eclipse is, after all, working on a r remake of the original Wizardry right now. So there is a weird possibility that maybe that's got something to do with it, but that's a bit of speculation. At a glance, this kind of just looks like they want to make it into a like an NFT. But I feel like because they're dealing in that market, if they're going to uh, file for a trademark, it would be natural for them to just Add that in, considering at the very beginning it does say for the categories of downloadable game software and recorded game software. So they and also videos and trailers and highlights and all that stuff. So while there is all of that blockchain stuff in there that is kind of muddying the waters, there is like perhaps a chance that they are coming at this from the more documentarian perspective, which I would actually think would be really interesting. But I still don't like the idea of them owning the trademark for it. Regardless, this is just an application. They don't actually have it yet, so. I'm curious, what are your thoughts? Uh, this this stuff's strange to me. I'm not an expert in, in this. I've been doing a bit of Googling about trademark law for the last two hours, and I feel that this is something that should probably be talked about within the roguelike community. I know there's already posts on the subreddit, which is not how I originally found it. It was posted on my Discord, which is how I found it. But there's people discussing it on the subreddit, back and forth, a lot of talk of NFTs and various other things. And I, while I think that that's a major concern and I don't think people should own the rights to Rogue in any way, because for me, I, I feel it's one of those pieces of software that just should be open source and available to everybody for free. And you can get it. And once again, source code's linked in the description of this video, but is this something we should be concerned about? I personally feel it is because the concept of Atari as a company makes me feel icky. Doesn't matter what era they're in, They've ruined enough of my favorite IPs, I'm looking at you, Roller Coaster Tycoon, that I just do not want them to have the rights to touch anything, except for stuff that they already own, because, well, I guess that's dead. And as a company, I, I hope that they slowly separate themselves from this early 2020s fad of NFTs and blockchain shit, because there's no endgame there. People don't want that. It's been made pretty clear by almost every single market that's they've tried to force that into, by they, I mean people who are okay with the existence of blockchain in video games, whenever, or any software or media for that matter, whenever it's tried to be forced in, people have almost unanimously rejected it. And that's happened with video games. And I don't see why making NFTs of Rogue, a game that didn't sell well and is mostly championed by a very niche community of people who largely are pro open free software and access of information, which is the opposite of the, you know, commercializing of literally everything, which is largely what the blockchains makes the blockchain makes possible. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you thought this was interesting, leave a like on it. If you don't like it, leave a dislike on it. I don't care. Let me know in the comments section if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll get back on topic with the next one. I've got some tutorials in the works. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.